Welcome back for yet another PG-13 Bible story. Today we have a story coming at you from Exodus chapter 12, one of those well-known Bible stories as well as we consider the Passover. It's an important event in Jewish history, in Christian history, in biblical history, and the whole of the narrative of Scripture. It is this Passover meal that Jesus is celebrating with his, la his disciples on that night in which he was betrayed, a powerful image of salvation. All throughout, as it connects Old Testament and New, the blood of the Lamb shed to preserve God's people. At the Passover, those Israelites were supposed to take the blood of that Lamb, spotless without blemish, and to use that blood to paint their doorposts so that it would save his people from death. So that when that angel of death would come, it would not enter their house and they would be saved and preserved. A wonderful and a beautiful image of that death of Christ, his blood that covers us and saves us from death. But so often we get caught up in what is beautiful about these Bible stories that we are willing to overlook the ugly and the evil, maybe, that is done. We tend to overlook the fact that God sends a plague of death upon the earth. That God kills all of the firstborn of all of the e of Egypt in every household from Pharaoh to the captive down to the very livestock in Egypt. The firstborn is dead. So you have not only the death of the lamb, but the death throughout the entire nation of Egypt. Not a town or a city or a state, but an entire nation is plagued by death, the firstborn, in every house, dead. The Bible even tells us that a great cry in e there was a great cry in Egypt. There was not a house where someone was not dead. God killed all of them. Why? Why would God be so deadly? Why would he bring about and send forth this plague of death? Well, he sends it against his enemies. He sends it against the enslavers of his people, those who did not believe they had the chance. They could have painted their doors with the blood of the Lamb, but they refused. They oppose God and oppose his people. They are God's enemies and the enemies of his people. And God does not play nice with his enemies. He doesn't play games. He, he gives them their chance, but they have hardened their hearts and have refused to believe, and for them, God brings an end. The enemies of God, for the enemies of his people, for enemies like sin and death and the devil, God does not play games. He utterly and totally defeats him. The faithful are preserved. There is not one part of the enemy that goes untouched. Every household defeated. Every enemy of God done and dead and gone, yet God's people preserved in the name and the blood of Jesus. Amen.